Hi everyone, uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Mandeep and in today video in today's video we are going to discuss support vector machine. As a general practice that we follow, uh, we first discuss the uh, conceptual part on the whiteboard and uh, in next video we do the implementation part. So we will follow the same. In today's video we are going to discuss the conceptual part of support vector machine and we'll do the uh, practical implementation in the next video so let's get started what is support vector machine so basically support vector machine is a um, ml algorithm and this algorithm uh, is basically used for both type of problems regression as well as classification so it can be used for both type of problem but um, this algorithm out of these two works more well or more better or perform better with classification problems. So generally uh, it is used for classification problems. So let's get started with this uh, video. Assume that uh, we have uh, our some data points and uh, we plotted them um, in this x and y axis this graph and let's say we have only two type of data points and here i am representing them let's say these are one class these all data point belongs to one class and let's say uh, these circle belong to another class so if someone asks me that we have to um, you know classify these data points into two different classes so it is very simple for me so what I will do I will draw a line or hyperplane or plane which basically segregates these data points into two absolute classes which belongs to data point of their particular type so um, this uh, I can do th like this way so uh, now the question arises what are support vector or what is support vector machine so support vector are the you know for example for this data point for this data point for this data point support vector are the coordinate of each observation and if i talk about the svm specifically this is my svm classifier this line represents my svm classifier and the coordinates of each data point so let's say for this data point x and y so whatever the value of x and y that is termed as support vector similarly for this data point for each each and every data points so that's the idea behind support vector machine now let us go into more detail and we will be covering different scenarios in this uh, uh, support vector machine now assume that the scenario one that we are going to discuss assume that uh, we also we have the similar uh, data points which are like distributed something like this way and let's say there are three person in the room and i asked them that divide these data points into um, two different classes so assume that um, one person divided like said that this line this line is dividing these data points into two two diff two classes so one day one type of data point as are this and the other point of data point are this another person came and he said let's say i will try doing this line let's say and uh, then third person came and he said no it seems that you guys have some error in dividing these i will use this 
so let's say this b i named these as a b c these lines so you can see that this c line this a line both these lines have error in classification that means this c line have classified few of the circle data points as these star data points and same true for uh, star data points it has uh, classified some star data points as circle data points similarly if we take a look at this a line this also has some error now as per if i go by the definition of this line this line is saying that okay uh, the data points which are below me are the stars and above me are the circles but here is the error as well in this as well so it has error as well and here comes the b now it has perfectly uh, classified these data points into two different categories so uh, the whole point of discussion was that um, here we have three three classifiers one two and three these are kind of dividing these points into two classes but a and c have error while classifying but b don't have so we will pick the b1 b1 is the best classifier for us because it is classifying each and every data point 100% accurate now let me uh, make the same thing little bit more complex because life is not so simple in actual world we do not get, uh, get so simple data or so simple classifier assume that we have similar data points now these dots represents let's say circle and these are the star and assume that i have drawn three lines and each of these three lines are classifying all the data points 100% accurate there is no error in previous case we have the case in which two classifying lines or two classifiers were having errors but one was not having so it was easy for us to pick the right one but in this case in such case where each and every classifier is classifying 100% accurate but out of these three let's say a b c which one we should pick so here comes the concept of margin margin is basically the distance of nearest data point from a line or a plane which is basically dividing uh, into different classes that should be maximum so very first for example um, from this data point uh, for a line this is the distance for the same data point for b line uh, this is the data this is the distance and for the same data point for c line this is the distance the similar way uh, for this data point assume that this is the distance for c this is the distance for b for this is the distance for a so we should always pick the classifier the line or the plane which has maximum distance or which have maximum margin from the nearest data point so that will be our best classifier so out in this case out of this abc we have b classifier which has maximum distance from its nearest data points so we will pick b classifier this is another scenario now moving on to the one more scenario i want to cover uh, two more basically so assume that uh, we have something like our data points are like this way we have data points like this way now we have one classifier like this and one classifier is this one
all these things are for representational purpose please don't uh, debate on the shape or the and writing um, so uh, idea here is that uh, assume that we have our data point something like this way and if we take a close look at and a and b are the classifier a and b are the lines or plane which are basically dividing these into this data point into two classes but if we take a uh, by the concept of margin if we take a look at b we can find that uh, b has the maximum distance from its nearest data points as compared to a so for um, but uh, so that means we should pick b but catch here is that we cannot pick b why a because although this plane has less margin from the nearest data points but it do not have any classification error so uh, if we have a scenario where we have uh, let's say two classifier where one classifier have more margin from the nearest data point but it has some error and we have another classifier which has less margin from the data points but have no error so we always pick uh, which don't have any error so in this case we will pick a now i'm going to discuss one more scenario uh, in our practical life we are not going to get always the linear separable data points so assume that if i get some sort of this sort of data here these dots are representing one class now let's say this star shape are representing another class here we can see that these are not separable by any linear line or linear plane we cannot do that because our data is distributed in such a way so in such a way in such problem support vector machine does a very good job how it solves such problems now uh, to solve such problems what support vector machine does it uh, increases the dimension of such problem uh, let's say this is a 2d problem uh, two different classes and uh, which are distributed on this way so what it will do it will create one more dimension and let's say that is represented by z so how it how that will be created z is equal to x square plus y square so whatever the value of x and y we will get the respective z values and assume that we get a one more dimension um, one more axis so you can see uh, since it is a 2d whiteboard uh, to imagine that uh, assume that this is the third plane my marker is perpendicular to it so you can see that that is perpendicular to that new plane is perpendicular to this new dimension is basically perpendicular to this whiteboard so uh, with that help we can solve it and this concept is called as kernel converting low dimension problem to high dimension so uh, let me take uh, solve it using this uh, the real life example i am going to show it to you now if i have to classify this this particular data point into two classes assume that i have created one more uh, one more plane and which is something like perpendicular to this then you can see that the data points which are the data points which are inside this are one class and outside are another class so let me make it more simple for you here you can see that the data points which are inside this cup they they belong to one class and the data points which are outside this cup they belong to another class 
let me pick it up you can see that so that's how support vector machine solves uh, this type of problem as well so that's all for this video in this video we discussed about svm margin classifier kernel and in next video we will be doing its uh, practical implementation using python thanks for watching and uh, again i request you if you like my uh, videos please uh, like them subscribe my channel and let me know if you want some particular topic to be covered i am working on the machine learning playlist thank you guys see you